Impermanent loss, or in simple speak, not yet a permanent loss, is one of the hardest concepts in DeFi for most people to understand. What really is impermanent loss and what's all the fuss? And what do I really need to know? In this video, I'll explain what impermanent loss is using a simple example and easy to understand pictures. Watch this video all the way through as I sum it up at the end. Here at Grassroots Crypto, I like to keep it simple for new users as I can relate to the struggle new people have to understand all of this DeFi and crypto stuff. Impermanent loss is a complex subject and there are many other videos on it showing maths and formulas and stuff like that. I won't be doing much of that. I just wanna give a basic understanding of the concept without going into the details so you can decide what is best for you. As with my previous video, this concept applies to most decentralized exchanges or DEXs within DeFi, but I'll be using BEPSWAP as an example. Check out my video on basic concepts of BEPSWAP if you haven't already. I'll be putting all the links plus some additional resources in the description below for your reference. Let's get started. Impermanent loss is a risk liquidity providers have when staking their assets in a liquidity pool. It is the potential difference in gains between holding and being a liquidity provider. Most people seem to freak out about this because it sounds scary, it's hard to understand, and it's hard to explain. So say I have two assets, Rune and BNB. So about $1,000 each. So I've got $2,000 worth of assets. I'm rich. Woohoo! So I have a choice. I can either hold the assets in my wallet and wait for the price to go up, or I can put them to work and become a liquidity provider by staking them into a liquidity pool, say in BetSwap. So holding assets in my wallet gives me certainty of what I hold and I can easily track price movements, whether they go up, whether they go down, so on and so forth. As a liquidity provider, I can get paid for staking my $2,000 by collecting fees for people who swap assets, like one cryptocurrency for another, or here, like swapping Rune for Binance Coin. And check it on BetSpot, the rates are pretty good, like between 15% and over 100% APY. However, like with most things, there are risks, and one of which is called impertinent loss. So let's look at an example. Here is my liquidity pool made up of Rune and BNB. That's a 50-50 split of $1,000 each side. I've simplified this for the purposes of explaining the concept of impermanent loss. So nice round figures. In crypto, you may have heard, price is volatile and it sometimes changes. So let's say that the BNB price goes up. The liquidity pool is no longer balanced at a 50-50 split. Something like BepSwap is known as an Automated Market Maker, or AMM, and they are programmed to hold and maintain a 50-50 split of the liquidity pool. To be honest, sometimes in other AMMs there are other ratios, but we're just going to be working with 50-50 for now. So in this case, the rebalancing process will sell BNB and buy Rune to rebalance the liquidity pool back to a 50-50 split. During the rebalancing process, funds are lost. So think of it like they're, they're, they're spilled out of the pool due to the bow wave of the rebalancing process or however you want to think about it. Funds are lost during a rebalancing process. So while you may think that the new value is going to be $2,200 when the pool rebalances, it's actually less than that. And this is the impermanent loss. Where in our example, we lost $2.50 in the rebalancing process. Again, it's not a real number, it's just an example but uh, that saves going through all the formulas. So let's compare this against holding. If I were to withdraw from the liquidity pool now, e.g. after the rebalancing, I would have $2,197.50 plus whatever I would have earned or been paid for being a liquidity provider. Thus, I've missed out on the full benefits of the price gain if I were to be holding the uh, assets by about $2.50 or 11% in our example. And note this is a small pool, so if the small pool was 10 times the amount, the loss would be about 10 times more, so 11% in general. A few things that need to be pointed out here. The loss is on paper only. It is not final, hence not yet permanent. It will likely change tomorrow, and e.g. BNB could go back to its original price, and therefore there'll be no impermanent loss at all. It becomes permanent when you withdraw from the liquidity pool. Number two. If both assets rise by the same percentage, then it's all good. The total pool value increases. It's when it's lopsided or the pool becomes out of balance that it is a problem. Number three, price always changes. So the amount of impermanent loss or the amount that you're missing out on is always changing. Number four, the fees you get paid as a liquidity provider may have been more or less than what you've missed out on. 
You need to take away the fee revenue from what you have missed out on to understand your actual net gain or loss. So why do it? Why become a liquidity provider if I'm exposed to the risk of impermanent loss? Automatic market maker platforms like BetSwap, Thorchain, need liquidity providers to operate so they make it very lucrative for liquidity providers by giving them a good share of the fees, sometimes offering additional network benefits, and some even provide tokens for providing liquidity which also have value. It is a risk many are willing to take as there are handsome rewards on offer. It must be said, however, the more the price moves, the more impermanent loss becomes an issue and that impermanent loss can be greater than the income generated or network benefits given as a liquidity provider. Or put another way, when price movements are small, generally the income generated is more than enough to cover impermanent loss, but when price movements are very large, it may not be. Key questions you need to ask yourself. Number one, what are you trying to achieve? E.g. do you want to hold assets and they hope they'll go up and then try and capitalize on every price increase? Or do you want to provide a service and get paid for it and not worry too much about trying to get every potential price increase or capitalize on it? And number two, what is your time preference? Are you in it for the short term, like trying to short trade? Or are you thinking like long-term asset appreciation and you're not concerned too much about short-term volatility? Remembering impermanent loss only becomes permanent when you withdraw. So let's sum it all up. Impermanent loss, or in simple speak, not yet a permanent loss, happens during the rebalancing process of a liquidity pool, which is caused by price movements. It is a risk liquidity providers have when staking their assets in a liquidity pool. The more the price moves, e.g. the more the liquidity pool becomes out of balance, the more impermanent loss becomes an issue. And impermanent loss only becomes permanent when you withdraw. I don't know what your situation is or what's best for you. Whatever you decide to do, I hope you have a better understanding now of impermanent loss. Put a comment down below to let me know if you now understand the concept or not. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. Impermanent loss is a bit more complex than what I've explained here. So I've added some additional resources in the description below to continue your research. Thanks until next time. Bye.